All right, so we're doing a brief introduction to kite aerial photography. Sometimes it's called KAP, that's the acronym for it. It's basically attaching a camera to a kite line and raising it up to the sky. And making it okay, so uh, we're here to give a basic introduction to the equipment that's used for kite aerial photography. My name is Jim Powers from America, and we have with us... Sue Story from England. Sandra Yenchantlos from France. Wolfgang Pick from Germany. All right, and we're going to just start with Sue. She's going to briefly explain just the kite that she has and some of the anchors in the line. I've got the Power Sled 14 here. I've also got one about twice the size, uh, Power Sled 24. And uh, this Power Sled 14, I call it my small kite, and I use it in very strong winds. It's a soft kite, and it's, uh, it's very steady. Oh, it moves a lot, but it doesn't crash. Okay, good. Let's go right to our next one. Okay. Describe what kite you have. Yeah, so here is an HQ uh, Delta Graphic. So it's a 3 meter wide uh, Delta with a foot detail and uh, an autocam free. Good. And this is a Levitation Light Delta uh, with an autocap rig that you see here. <coughs> and then I also use a uh, strata spool for the line for rolling in. And next we have a uh, Wolfgang. Yeah, one example we have the so-called cup foil, right aerial photography foil. It's inflatable and extremely stable, so it's used uh, by many cameras. Alright, and how about the uh, camera that you use? Yes, uh, the cup foil mainly is used for um, gentle wind, up to strong wind, but if you need uh, light wind, you have the only chance to lift a camera, a camera like this. This is a rubber band from the bicycle, just a knot, and it's up to save to 10 kilo pull. And show us how to attach it to the line quickly. And as you can see, it's just basically a camera on a string, and you just clip it on the line like we showed previous. Just a moment, we can use this method. No problem. Okay. Basically, you just attach it to the line. Okay. And then you see there's a, there's, a, there's a long string of maybe about five or six feet, uh, one and a half meters. Uh, and and then it just hangs on the line, and it, you see the, uh, this is the GoPro camera, very lightweight. Already balanced. It automatically takes a picture every so many seconds or video, and then the kite will raise it up. So this is probably the simplest way if a beginner wants to begin very simple camera just hanging straight down from the line and it will take uh, satisfactory pictures that you'll be pleased with but it took uh, it took 26 years to find out how simple it can be <laughs> yes okay thank you all right I want to talk about kite aerial photography uh, safety uh, this is Jim Powers from uh, America and with kite aerial photography there's several things you want to consider for safety one is your own personal safety uh, generally by wearing gloves or other some device to ward about uh, the line slipping through your hand. But you also can have to consider about safety of other people, uh, of other uh, personal property. And so typically I recommend to have a large open field, is what I call a safety box, so that if the kite were to crash to the ground, uh, maybe with your camera attached, it will not hurt any people, it will not hurt any property. You may have some damage to the camera, but you could still replace that. Uh, so for kite aerial photography, there's regulations in each country that govern uh, how high to fly and that not to fly near airports. You don't want to fly over power lines. You don't want to try and fly over an active roadway. So basic common sense are things to consider for safety. Uh, you can search online and find a lot of uh, excellent tips and regulations. I would encourage everyone to do that uh, before they put a kite uh, in the sky. All right, so hello again, it's uh, Jim Powers uh, from America, and I have Sue Story here from England, and we're just continuing our discussion on safety for kite aerial photography. Uh, it's important to have a good pair of gloves to avoid having the line rub against your hand and cause a rope burn. Uh, also, it's good to have an anchor point that you can tie off the kite uh, to the ground so that it's safe. And here we have an example of just a, what I call a dog stake that twists into the ground, a screw into the ground you can attach your kite line to to avoid the kite uh, flying away while you're trying to attach the kite uh, camera to the kite line. The other thing to consider uh, is don't try to fly over power lines. 
uh, they can electrical shock hazards. So these are just common uh, sense safety things. It, most important for me is to have a good safety box, uh, again, that you can crash your kite into and not harm any other individuals or property. Okay, thank you. All right, All right so here we are. We're showing how to uh, put a kite in the sky. First thing I want to show is how do you attach the uh, kite line the, the kite to the kite line itself. What's the way that you found yes. works the best? Uh, I just use a fishing swivel. You have to take care to do the hook for safety. And now I prepare the kite a little bit. I open the mouth. Get the tail ready. Take the And then, please. Can you see we have a very uh, windy, windy day today, and at the Above uh, a certain distance above, it doesn't have to be that high above, but generally higher than the nearby trees, uh, the, the air will be more stable and the kite will steady out. But when they, you try to first launch it near the ground, it's, it's uh, always turbulent. So you have to be careful of uh, getting it into clear air. All right, so we're showing uh, the basics of uh, how to attach a kite to the kite line. There are several different ways of doing it. Uh, and Sue's story from the UK is going to basically show a simple lark's head uh, that kind of just fits over the top of the knot. But go ahead. Just like that. Make the two loops together. Put it over there. And pull, pull it tight. 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 And, and up to the knot. Right. And this is called a stopper knot kind of at the end. So this, this part that we just did slides along the line. But this, this stopper knot will stop it from going over. And that's very strong. I've never, we've never had any trouble with that popping off. Uh, it's, it's uh, securely holds the kite. It's very simple right. knot. Yep. It's very easy to loosen. Maybe you show how to loosen it when the kite comes down. And you want to take the kite off the line. You just pull it out and slip it out. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, so uh, this is Jim Powers from America and here with Emmanuel from France. And we're going to demonstrate the launching of a kite, a simple delta. In this particular case, it's a windy conditions uh, where you can lift the kite right out of your hand. We're going to just show an example of doing that. Okay. Okay. Some line. Yeah. off and, and flying. And again, you may have some turbulence right near the ground uh, that uh, causes the kite to dip and you want to get it up higher as quickly as you can. Okay, so this is uh, Jim Powers from America. We're doing this series on how to do kite aerial photography. This is a real basics on just how to launch the kite. I'm in France today with... Jean Daniel. Also from France. And we're going to demonstrate what's called a long line launch. This is typically done on a, on a calm day when you want to reach to the higher winds uh, and today it's very windy but we're going to just demonstrate the basics of how it works. So what we have is a string in the hand, we have a kite up on the hill uh, ready to be launched and if we swing from behind here so you can get see Jean Daniel and then uh, uh, we just go ahead and pull it and up it goes. And that can be done with one person. Uh, you don't need to have people hold the kite, it can just be done with one person. You see the kite has to be placed downwind. It has to be kind of leaning against uh, uh, something to kind of hold it partially up. And then you can simply just pull quickly uh, and give constant pressure on it and it'll take it right into the sky. That's called a long line launch. We're uh, showing how to attach a camera kite line. Uh, and this is using a pick of it rig. It has two attachment points. You can use little clips like this. You really just wrap the string around these clips. The friction holds it in place. I'll just show you. go three or four times. Actually try to go in different directions to avoid the twist that comes from both. And then you raise it up, do the high point, two or three times around the line, two or three times around the line, and then it's attached. And then 
and I always try to make sure that uh, everything is set safety wise you have the camera turned on you have the lens cap removed uh, and you have it focused so that you can then take pictures uh, this one particular one has an auto cap rig it has a switch that does the in and the tilt and I just want to make sure that uh, the camera is taking pictures turn it on uh, and make sure that uh, everything is stable before you launch it into the sky and then after it's set wait for a second or two to make sure it's taking a picture and then I raise it up. So I'm going to go ahead and raise it up just for a few feet. Okay, there we go. So up it goes. You got it? You're flying it. Uh, and that's how you put it on the line and uh, and that's the start of a, a good cap session. Okay. gives it stability so that it won't uh, just twist freely in the wind. So we want the stability for the camera. All right, so now we've it's attached okay, it. Okay. Take over. Uh, the next thing you do is then raise it up. And the actual the kite itself lifts the camera up. You let out another, uh, you know, whatever height you want to the camera, and up it goes into the sky. Okay? Good. Right, so here we are bringing down the on a pendulum rig for well, at least one with the glove. Okay. have a good safe area I can see swings back and forth this is a very windy day we're getting a lot of turbulence in the buildings and the trees nearby in your hands and then on the ground and then you can remove the spars uh, and take the uh, take the line off the kite here we have an example of a lark's head maybe we can just come in and show there's a lark's head knot so this is a stopper knot Let's go ahead and just show how to remove a lark's head knot. You just kind of break the back of the knot, and then you can just slip out uh, the, the uh, leader on the kite. So this is a delta kite, and this is the, just a little pigtail uh, with a stopper knot on it, and that's what you put the lark's head over, just to show putting it on again. You just make a simple lark's head, and you slip it over the knot, and then you just kind of hold it and pull it tight. And then that, that'll be secured for as long as you need to fly it. Okay, just give us uh, your name. Oh yes, it's Emmanuel. And I'm going to try to show you how to bring back the ring. And also here we have uh, Wolfgang. Hello, I'm Wolfgang from Germany. Also kept many years. And I'm uh, Jim, Jim Powers from been in the sky and we're now taking it down and we're going to show you how to take the camera off the line. All right, hello, it's uh, Jim Powers uh, from America. We're talking about tight aerial photography and now we're going to talk about the most important part. That's how we do it. And we got with the other group of people are going to introduce themselves uh, and they're going to describe what fun is to them for tight aerial photography. For me, it's really flying the kite and just a joy to relax and having a kite in the air and also some taking some pictures at the same time. Uh, the part I like the best, uh, having fun, is just doing it with other people, even young children that can just come up and just have a little bit of fun, put a smile on their face, and put a smile on my heart when that happens. Uh, the best part of the guy is the 
late evening, even at night, when the wind is really quiet and you just take the line with two fingers <laughs> and everything is absolutely perfect. Sue, introduce yourself. I have two stories from England and uh, I like the, sometimes the challenge of uh, taking a picture of a subject and uh, quite often, uh, like here at this citadel, you can't see that what is inside. And uh, when we were at uh, Willemstadt, the castle was low across the canal. And you can see the castle walls, but um, then uh, when I saw the pictures, you know, wow, it's uh, a formal garden inside. And you couldn't see that, you could just see the towers of the castle. And so uh, also the fun is finding what you've taken, what photos of the you've taken. Okay. Thank you. And uh, how about Wolfgang? Introduce yeah. yourself. Hi, I'm Wolfgang from Germany. I fly kites for fun, especially in the late afternoon. And I can tell you a story that brings you back to nature. In the late afternoon, maybe early evening, young swallows came and sit on the kite line to rest. And this I will never forget. <laughs> so these are lifetime memories. Um, and you learn about nature, about winds, you get also respect, fun, or respect is always part of uh, fun, I think. Uh, and I think it enriches your life because it's a kind of meditation somehow. So just enjoy, fly, learn, and enjoy life. It's a great time. All right, well, thank you very much for listening. Again, this is a beginning series kind of on kite aerial photography, trying to show some of the basics uh, from a few experienced kite aerial photographers who are enjoying a beautiful week in Breck uh, at a kite festival in France.